James, what are those metal and electronic parts in your closet? Those are the remains of a robot I built about five years ago as part of a science experiment. But the robot became a threat to others, so I shut it down and dismantled it. Maybe we can figure out what went wrong with its programming and correct it. I've been studying computer science in school, so let me help. There. I have added a cell routine requiring the robot to never attack anyone unless and until it or anyone it is loyal to is attacked first. So, are you ready? Yes, let's do this. Pulling the switch. I am your to command, master and mistress. James and Penny, are you sure about this? I haven't forgotten when the robot almost put Miss Jenkins in the hospital. Mrs. Smith, since resurrecting the robot was my idea, I will take full responsibility for any mishaps. But I did find what went wrong with the robot last time and fixed it. It should pose no danger now. Robot, this woman is my mother and you will take orders from her too. Yes, Master. Mother, now that you are mayor of this town, I would like to make this robot your bodyguard. Well, I guess I would feel safer if I had protection. Thank you. Debbie and her new business partner, Claudette Rouge, have made a YouTube channel to promote their modeling agency. This is the channel's first video. Hello, I am Debbie Smith. And I am Claudette Rouge. Together we run the modeling agency based in Dallas, Texas named Aphrodite Agency. I am the Vice President of Daily Operations, and Debbie is the Vice President of Marketing. Between and behind us is our agency's logo combining a heart representing love, the traditional symbol of both females in the planet Venus, and an upraised fist representing defiance of the patriarchy. We are a modeling agency to promote and defend feminist ideas in the modeling profession. We invite all models who wish to be treated with dignity and respect to come join us. We are accepting of all kinds of people, including women of color, LGBT models, disabled people, plus-sized models and other models who may have been rejected by other agencies for not conforming to industry standards. We seek to broaden how the world sees models. Debbie, I would like you to meet my mother, Cynthia Rouge. Mother, this is Debbie Smith, who led the revolt at this agency. It is an honor to meet you. Mrs. Smith. When my daughter told me she wanted to be a model, I opposed this, fearing she would be abused by men. Thanks to you, I need not worry about that anymore. I'm glad I could help, Mrs. Rouge. I have spent most of my life running various businesses in the Dallas area. Now my daughter has persuaded me to come out of retirement and join your agency as its CEO. I'd like to speak to the agency's current owner. That would be my stepfather. Steve Mueller. I will give you his number so you may speak with him directly. Cynthia Rouge then negotiates with Steve. Then Steve contacts Debbie. I have decided to accept Mrs. Rouge's bid to become the CEO of Aphrodite Agency and so you and Claudette will be relieved of your vice president positions so you can focus on modeling and photography. I will still be the owner and the agency must make a profit before I can give the agency to anyone else, including Mrs. Rouge. Do you think you, Claudette, and her mother can succeed? I certainly hope so. I just have to remember that I would have had a much harder time without your help. However long it takes, I will work hard to make the agency a success people will remember and praise for decades to come. While Jessica and Lucy are in Galveston for their honeymoon, Lucy decided to text her sister Victoria. And this was the result. Victoria, I have wonderful news. Our father is actually still alive. I met him last week when he paid me a visit. Well, of course he is still alive, you idiot. Why did you ever think otherwise? Because our mother said he was dead to her. I assumed she meant he was really dead. No. She was referring to him leaving her and us, as well as the Jehovah's Witnesses. You also became dead to me and mother as well, so I guess that means you are a zombie, eh? 
LOL you and our father are unworthy of my love and that of Jehovah. Unless you repent, you are both doomed. I told you that was not a good idea. What were you hoping to gain from it? Jessica, I keep hoping I can say something to wake my sister up and quit the cult too. Cults appeal to people's egos by telling them they are special because of what they believe, not their deeds. As long as you can feel superior to others, it doesn't matter what lies you tell yourself or others to justify your cult membership. Mother, you told me grandfather was dead. So why did you say that you knew otherwise to Aunt Lucy? Scott, your aunt is a traitor, just like your grandfather, so I am happy to say whatever can hurt Lucy to make her pay for abandoning me and mother to live in sin with Jessica. And I am still angry at Lucy for causing me to lose that chance to interview Laura Park. I got a pay cut over that incident. So my mother is a liar and a backstabber. And if she is like that, maybe I am in the wrong religion. Miss Sims, I have great news. Although you are still HIV positive, that only means the antibodies produced by your immune system to resist the virus are present within your bloodstream. But there's now no trace of the virus itself within you. You are completely AIDS free. Awesome. So I no longer need to take the antiviral medication? I am cured of AIDS. Technically, you never had the disease, but now we know no one can get the AIDS virus from you. Including any children you give birth to. And what about my love partner, Paul? He was born with the virus because he got it from his mother. Could he also be free of the virus? If he comes here for an examination, we can certainly find out. So what did you find, Dr. Drake? I have confirmed that there is no remaining trace of HIV in Paul's body. Unless he is infected from someone else, he will not have AIDS. He is completely safe. Yes! I am so happy. Wait until Vicky hears about this. Paul, I have a question. Shoot. Now that we are both free of the AIDS virus, do you want to lose your virginity with me? I think we have waited long enough. <laughs> yeah, let's finally do it. Only one problem. We have no birth control here. Actually, we do. My sister Carrie has condoms she got from Mother Jessica several years ago that she never used. I know where they are, so I will swipe one of them. All right. Are you sure about this? Are you ready? Yes, yes. A thousand times yes. Give me your body. Now. So you saw the video on YouTube and want to join our modeling agency? Yes. I recognized one of the ladies in the video. My own cousin Debbie. I was overjoyed to see she was a model and I want to be one too. Very well. You may submit your application and I will look it over. Thanks in advance. What? Absolutely not. Rebecca has caused other members of the family, including me, trouble in the past. I was hoping never to see her again and I certainly don't want to work with her. I understand. I already did a background check on her and she has a criminal record, including acts of shoplifting, assault, trespassing, and vandalism. Not to mention having several children and then abandoning them to be raised by her own parents. 
She is a classic sociopath. So even without your input, I would have rejected her. But knowing she must have hurt you too makes the choice all the more obvious. And so Cynthia Rue sends Rebecca Smith a rejection letter. But guess who Rebecca is now living with? I'm sorry, Aunt Diana, but I was rejected. My attempt to infiltrate the Aphrodite Agency and then undermine it from within went nowhere. Well, it was worth a try. But that's why I have my own modeling agency, so I can hire you instead. I'm thinking if we play a form of cultural war, we can damage the public image of Debbie's agency. How so? By pointing out that Debbie is an atheist and a hardcore liberal and those beliefs are not popular here in Oklahoma. We can instead promote traditional values to attract as both models and clients those who are deeply religious and conservative. <laughs> you know only stupid people really believe that bullcrap, right? You and I both know it's all a bunch of scams. Of course. But that means there are a lot of people out there we can seduce and convince to do our bidding. We can make money off their delusions. So you want to do this, Debbie? Sure. Let me put on the wig and the crown. How do I look, Claudette? Perfect. Let me get the camera set up so we can proceed with shooting. Yes, Debbie, these pics Claudette took of you are awesome. We will publish them immediately. I'm really glad you came on board to help us. I was so worried that I might not know what I was doing in running this agency, but you have made everything work so easily. Well, it pays to have many good connections in the business world. Oh, did I tell you we just hired a couple of new models? They are black men, and a gay couple. Claudette did mention that. And I know one of them, Michael Jefferson. The other I have never met before. Michael, welcome aboard. And is this your husband? Yes, it is. A pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Smith. Michael has told me a bit about you, that you and he used to live in the same town before he and I married. That's true. And Michael told me last week he donated sperm to make a baby with you. Congrats. I know we have only just met, but I hope you will accept me and Michael both as the baby's fathers. Really? Well of course. So you have no objections to the procedure we used? No, because I told Michael that I was interested in adopting a child with him and then he came forward to tell of the deal he made with you. I know he told you I am the jealous type, but that only applies to other men trying to steal Michael away from me. I know you yourself have no interest in men and have your own wife. So all is good between us. Why you? That's one last thing for me and my wife Carrie to worry about. It's certainly better for a baby to have two fathers instead of no father. And I'm sorry for scaring you earlier. It was all a misunderstanding between Charlie and me. Do you still want to raise your child in this small town or would you prefer to live in Dallas? Maybe if Michael and I make enough money for modeling, we can buy a house big enough to raise a family in. That's something all four of us can work out eventually. Welcome to the Tuscany Tavern. What would you like to order? Actually, I am not here just to eat. I'm looking for my Aunt Lucy. I am her nephew, Scott. Does your mother know you are here? Nope. I told her I was going to Dallas to work on a rap record with a fellow rapper and a producer. Which is indeed true. I just finished that song. But now I am here to see you. And to apologize. For what? For scorning you because you left the Jehovah's Witnesses. I read a few months ago in the Bible where Jesus said judge not, lest you be judged. Yet my mother judges you to be a traitor living in sin. She seems to be following the watchtower instead of Jesus. I appreciate that. But the one you should really apologize to is Carrie. I know. And I remember what she said to me that day we met in the hospital, just before grandmother died. I would only join a religion that preaches true love. And you hypocrites don't. And Scott, I still consider you my cousin and I could even have been your friend, but you are too narrow-minded. And that only hurts you in the end.
I didn't know how to respond to her being so loving to me. I was told that atheists were selfish, hateful people because they rejected Jehovah. She was the opposite. I was the one hating her for being different. Well, now you know better and so you can be better. In any case, I forgive you. I will be moving out of my parents' house soon, but I don't think I will be ready to come out as being no longer a witness for a long time. I am not expecting you to oppose your mother. But I'm glad you no longer oppose me. Goodbye, cousin. And congrats on becoming a cop. I have to go now, but thanks for giving me another chance to be your friend. Hello, I am Ruth Scumbar and today, I will be talking with Ted Anderson, the former mayor of a town in East Texas that has been taken over by liberal atheists and lesbians to promote their subversive agenda. Mr. Anderson, why do you think you were removed from your office? My son, who I made the new police chief after the previous one was disgraced in a scandal, tried to set fire to the restaurant owned by the lesbian atheist liberals. He thought he was doing me a favor, since one of them had decided to run for mayor against me. But I never told him to do that. His zealotry was well-intentioned, but clearly misplaced. Anyway, I was blamed for the arson attempt in a form of guilt by association and my opponent got enough people to demand a recall election to force me out of office, despite the election being only 8 months away. Clearly, their eagerness to take over and run the town is concerning. What has happened since then? Just as I feared, Sandy Smith, the new mayor, has tripled sales taxes. Not only that, but she defunded the police department and fired all but one of the town's officers, who she made the new police chief then brought back to the police force the former chief who was disgraced and also hired her own daughter-in-law to be a cop, despite the young woman herself having a criminal record for acts of assault. Including assaulting a cop at one point. So clearly this new mayor does not believe in law and order and she is punishing the business community. How can she get away with this? It seems she is very good at appealing to ideals of civil rights and freedom, but only for people of color, atheists and LGBT people but wholesome Christians are suffering because their values are being openly scorned. What kind of society can result if the religion that was the very foundation of our morals and our culture is being denied and ridiculed? Think about what the Soviet Union and other communist countries were like. Without faith in God, we end up worshipping ourselves. Then we seek to punish those who have faith. I have also heard that Mrs. Smith wants to push gun control in the town, which would really put the freedom of the people in danger. So what do you intend to do about this? I'm going to run for mayor again. The sooner we get rid of the current one, the better. We can't allow her and her immoral allies to ruin my beloved town. He's really not telling the whole truth, is he? No. He is telling enough truth to make people believe him but not enough truth to make them understand why my mother did things like defunding the police or raise taxes to pay for road repairs and improving our water supply. There's nothing subversive about those things. I'm glad you recorded that interview to show me, James. This is what I will be up against in about five months. It seems that fast lies can go much farther than slow truth. We have an uphill battle to fight. Well, the cop I attacked one. Should never have been a cop, and two. Was trying to hurt James. But sure, don't tell your audience that, right? Unlike my predecessor, I pay careful attention to how people are reacting to my decisions. After all, this is a democracy and the people's desires and needs are what matter, not just a select few. You lie. If you give a damn about the people, why do you ignore me and my supporters? We have been at this town far longer than you and your fellow liberal atheists who have taken over. Excuse me, Mr. Anderson, but you were part of the problem with this town. As mayor, you didn't do what you were supposed to and instead decided to sell yourself out to business interests to help them get rich at the expense of everyone else. You made those businesses parasites rather than healthy contributors to this town's economy. 
making personal attacks on me will not help. The idea that my being an atheist makes me unfit to lead this town is just ignorant prejudice. I grew up in this town, and after attending medical school I returned to it to serve the community. I have witnessed how you, Mr. Anderson, made this town almost like a third world country. Because of that, I will never vote for you again. Why is he even here? Let's just ignore that naysayer and stay focused on the issues. I am myself a business owner and I have no problem paying my fair share in taxes. I'm still recovering from the beating your own daughter-in-law gave me. That's why my parents and I are suing you, the town, and carry over that. Hey, you were supposed to be a cop, but you were acting like a schoolyard bully, so that's why I went at you. And in case anyone wants to see what Ted Wilson did to me first. Carrie pulls out her cell phone, attaches it to an electronic reader, and uploads a pic of herself to the screen on the back wall. So all I got that day was exact revenge, nothing more or less. As a cop myself now, I would never abuse my position to hurt any innocent people. I am devoted to protecting and serving the community. I was seriously thinking of quitting my English teaching job because I wasn't being paid enough to support my nephew. Thanks to Sandy Smith, my pay was doubled, enough to make me stay put and continue doing what I love doing most, helping the next generation to become productive, knowledgeable citizens. And then we are given declassified documents from the mayor's office showing that the reason the previous mayor was defunding the public schools was because he was trying to replace them with a private. Christian Academy to brainwash children with one specific kind of religion instead of teaching children of all religions freely. A decade ago I would have favored such a thing. Not anymore, damn it. Damn, I should have shredded those documents. Robot, remove Mr. Anderson from this chamber. As you command. Police Chief Root, do the same to Ted Wilson. Those two are not welcome here. As you wish, Mayor Smith. 